Hello, hello, hello. I hope you all are having an amazing start to your day or afternoon or evening, depending upon when you're listening to this. Um, something happened to me on Friday and I've just been taking the last few days to just reflect on it, take it in. And I felt really led in my spirit to come over here and share this because I think that more people need to hear it and more people need to take it in. So I won't be before you long, but just really listening to this download that's hit me and wanting to come over and share it. So if you if you saw the title, um, never ever compromise your calling to make other people comfortable. And that's essentially what this is going to be about today because <laughs> If we're being honest, we often compromise ourselves, our callings, our things that make us passionate because we want other people to feel comfortable or because it feels safe or we want ourselves to feel comfortable or we don't want to go against the grain. But I want to tell you, I am here to tell you that your purpose is so much bigger than you. Like when we think about our purpose, we often think inside the box, but it goes so much farther. Okay. So I've been attending the same church for, let me think, I, I've been attending it since my youngest, since I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, so several years, okay? And um, one of the parts that I love most about the church that I attend is they have this small group for single moms called Soul Provider. And I love this group because I have a community of people that are just like-minded, that I'm around, that are encouraging, all the things. Um, well, when the pandemic hit, our group kind of fell apart, our group kind of took a break and that was hard for me because that was like my safe space and we would go once a month and my girls loved it because they got to be with their same friends. I loved it because I got to be with just like-minded moms. It was it was a great place and I actually got to be a table leader meaning that I led different difficult decisions. I, lo I led difficult conversations um, and facilitated those conversations and I loved it. And so recently um, they decided to bring it back and so Friday was my first day physically in person in church and there and it was so exciting like I felt it in my spirit I was so excited but I'll be really really honest um, and if you've been with me for any amount of time you know that I'm all about honesty there's no point in me just telling you what sounds right I'm very 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 raw and real so as I was getting ready to go I had a very long day on Friday and I didn't feel like going but I kept feeling tug you know I kept feeling that tug like all right I need to go I need to go so I decided to go and I'm an introvert. So that's another piece I'm going to be honest about. I didn't feel like peopling. I was like, you know, I just want to lay in bed. I just want to watch Netflix, maybe go to sleep early, like do nothing. I'm exhausted. And uh, even, I, you know, I think back to like Thursday, the day before that, both of my daughters had two events. My daughter had a game and my other daughter had a curriculum night. So here I am trying to divide myself in half as a mom, trying to be all the things and be all the places to, to trying to be everywhere. And it was exhausting. So anyways, I decided to go because I felt that tug and I'm like, all right, I'm going to go. So I go and immediately when I get there, I'm like, I'm just going to kind of sit in the back. I'm not going to like, not, not engage, but just be quiet, just receive, just take a step back. And so I sat at a table and for a while, I was one of the first people there and for a while, no one sat at my table. And I don't know if it was maybe the vibe I was giving off or maybe the location, the probably the location of the table I was sitting at, it was kind of in the back. And then about 20 minutes in, um, someone came over and she said, hey, I'd love for you to join our table. And I'm like, sure, I know this lady. She's been at a couple different sessions. So I'm like, sure. So I joined this table and there's four of us total, okay? Two of the women are essentially brand new. One lady's from about four hours away and her sister's here locally and her sister invited her thinking this would be a great place for her to be. And so I sit at this table and I kept feeling like the tug to, to engage with these women, even though, again, I didn't feel like peopling. So I just started to talk to them. I started to talk to them about their kids and the things they do for a living and yada, yada, yada. And then I felt a tug to like give this lady a hug. I did not know why I wanted to hug this lady across from me. But I am like, no, I, you know, Corona, I want to give people space. I don't want to hug anybody. I'm just going to like sit here again. I'm going to focus on receiving for today. I'm going to focus on receiving the message. And the message was extremely powerful. It was talking about being intentional with our thoughts. And you guys know that I am loving mindset. I'm all about mindset. So anyways, at the end of the message, the, the leader of the Soul Provider group, she asks all of us to pick one person in the room that we don't know very well and pray for them, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and just allowing something to flow through us to pray for these people. So at that time, I knew immediately I needed to pray for this lady. And again, I'm like, man, I'm tired. I just kind of want to receive, but I'm like, I, 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 I got to pray. Like sometimes we need to give even when we feel like we want to receive, right? 
So I walk over to her, again, she's just kind of across the table from me. So I walk over to her and I'm like, hey, are you okay if, if I pray with you? And she was like a little taken back, but really pleasant. And she's like, sure, I'd love that. And so I proceeded to pray for her. And um, after I prayed for her, she shared her journey that, you know, during the pandemic, she had been furloughed um, and she has two children that she's trying to provide for as a single mom. And she just was grateful for the prayer and feeling like life was spoken over her. And I was like, oh, okay, like that prayer went well. And then she proceeded to say my name. She was like, uh, Dr. Nicole, yeah. she's like, you're you're such a blessing. And the only reason that this threw me off is because anyone that doesn't know me doesn't know how to pronounce my name. They jack my name up tremendously. And I have tons of episodes on my podcast, or actually my first episode is all about my name and how I uncovered the meaning of it. Um, but for a long time, I hated my name because people would bomb it so bad. They called me Nicanolia, Nicolaya, Nicole. There, you know, I had a um, one of those random calls the other day about a car warranty for a car I don't have. We all get those. And they kept referring to me as Nicole. And I said, Nicolia is my name. And they're like, oh, do you mean Nicole? No, I mean Nicolia. Nicolia is my name, right? I know my name. I've only had it for a million years. Like, I know my name. But anyway, she said, uh, Dr. Nicolia, you're such a blessing. And I'm like, wow. I was like, thank you so much. That's so sweet. I said, thank you for also saying my name right. I said, no one ever does that. And that was the second time she had said my name. So it already kind of piqued my interest. And she responded, like, I hope that this doesn't come off wrong or scary. She's like, but I've been watching you for some time. And so again, I'm like, maybe she's seen me here locally in the church. Like, I'm, I'm trying to piece it together. And I'm like, oh, okay, what do you mean? She's like, well, I found you online. Um, I found one of your books. And then I just started to kind of watch what you do. And she was like, you encourage me. She's like, you give me reason to continue. You motivate me. And um, she was saying, like, even though during the season of being furloughed, She's just, she's feeling this, this push because she's like, you help women see that they can win, that winning is possible through your own experience and through your own journey. And immediately, like, I am such a, I'm a very uh, shy person. I know I don't, I don't always come off that way online, but I'm a very shy person. So immediately I wanted to like find my turtle shell and hide. But then I realized that people watch us even when we don't realize that people are watching. People are paying attention even when you don't realize that people are paying attention. And this is why when I started off today, what I said is your purpose is so much bigger than you. You don't even know that sometimes when you say yes to your purpose, you're creating a breakthrough for somebody else somewhere. And here's the crazy part. I came home that very day and I went through my social media channels. She is not a single follower on any of my sites, but this is confirmation that people are watching even when you don't think that they are. Even when you're feeling like giving up, you got to remember that someone somewhere is counting on you to do exactly what it is that you're called to do. And that's what I felt led in my spirit today to come over, to share, to, to, to let you guys know. Because somewhere, somebody, right, somebody that's listening to this today has already said no to their calling, right? Maybe it feels scary. Maybe they're stirring up a lot of fear or anxiety or overwhelm or questions about how they can make it happen. Or you're wondering, you're like, God, if you told me to do this, why does it seem difficult? But here's the thing, there is no growth where it's comfortable. And so if you want to get to where you want to be, you got to move out of your comfort zone. And here's the biggest thing, growth doesn't happen accidentally. It happens from consistency. You cannot get to where you want to be just by doing it sometimes. You have to be consistent. And so all those nights where I didn't necessarily feel like showing up and doing a live, I did it. All those days I wasn't sure if what I would post would resonate, I did it. All of those days where I was recording podcasts and I wasn't even getting listeners, I still showed up. And this is this is this is proof. It created a ripple effect to someone who lives four hours away from me, a woman who I've never seen her face, never known her name, and just had the privilege and honor to come across. And it was just such good timing to let us know that don't compromise your calling to make someone else comfortable. When the world tells you to play small, show up and play big. And that's the message that I felt a tug in my spirit to share with you guys today. Day. And so I just pray that when you feel your future calling you, that your answer is not based on what it is you're feeling in that moment, but what it is that you know is available for you in the future and that your answer is yes to your next level. So I hope that you all have an absolutely amazing, amazing day and I'll check in and chat with you guys later.